Coming up in this video, part five of interesting ways of how to style DV slider module. Let's check it. Hi everyone, Mac here. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to create a navigation mosaic using the DV slider module. Let me show you how. Okay, so let's get started with how to create a navigation mosaic with the DV slider module. And by the way, this post is by Leslie Burnell. So without wasting a lot of time, let's get started. Now, the first thing you need to do is to make sure that you're logged into the WordPress admin. Now, I'm already in the WordPress admin. So the next thing I need to do now is to add a new page. So I'm going to click on add new and let's call this page part five. And then we're going to click on use the Divi builder. OK, so the first thing we need to do here is we need to change this template from default template to blank. Now, the reason why we're doing that is because this is a landing page and we don't need the header and the footer part of this page. So I'm going to click on default template and change that to blank. And then I'm just going to click on publish. OK, so next what I need to do is to add a speciality section. So I'm going to click once on speciality section and this is the layout we need. So I'm going to click once on this as well. So you can see it's loaded below the top one here. So I'm just going to close or delete this because we don't need that. And then while we're here, the first thing we need to do here is to add a background image. So I'm going to click on the settings and then click on upload an image. Now the images we're going to use throughout this tutorial are all licensed. So you would need to use your images. If you haven't uploaded your images to your media library, this is how you need to do it. So you need to click on upload files select files and then you need to get navigate to the folder that has your images so let's so say for example your folder is on the main is on the desktop so this is how you'd um, click on the image and then click open to upload it to the media library now i have all my images set in the media library so i'm going to cancel that and then i'm going to go back to my media library and then select the image i need so just take note now of the dimensions of this background image it's 1920 by 1280 so you need to make sure you edit that using either photoshop or any um, image editing software so this will give you the best results 1920 by 1280 so i'm going to set that as a background so next what we need to do is to go into the custom css and this time we're going to go to the main element and paste this code. Now, what this code does is it makes sure that that image covers the full screen, no matter what device you're using. So it's very important that you add this. And also the CSS code we're going to use throughout this tutorial can be found on the post, which I'll link in the show notes below. You are free to use this CSS. So go ahead and follow along as you design this page. And in the advanced design settings, we need to make sure that um, make this section full width, oh, sorry, uh, use custom uh, width is set to um, percentage and it needs to be at 70% like that. And then use custom gutter width. That's important. That needs to be set to one. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and click on save and exit. Now, just to make sure that this is working, I'm just going to click update and we're going to do a quick preview. So I'm going to click on a view page and we can see that this image is filling up our whole, our whole screen beautifully. OK, so let's dive back in and make some more changes. So the next thing we need to do now is start adding the module. So the first module I'm going to add here is a divider. So I'm going to click on, on this divider and I'm just going to make sure that the height is 40 pixels and then I'm going to save and exit. Next, we need to add a slider. So I'm going to click on insert modules and then we're going to scroll down here to slider, click once. And then we need to make a few changes on this. So the first thing we need to do here is to make sure that the uh, arrows are set to hide arrows. So we don't want to see these arrows as uh, these images are scrolling through. OK, so next show controls. That's fine. Let's leave it to yes. Automatic animation. It's important that this is set to on and then the speed needs to be 6000. And then finally, we need to make sure that remove inner shadow is set to yes, because we don't want any inner shadows. Uh, oh, there's one more I forgot. Continue automatic slide on hover. That needs to be set to on. OK, so now I'm happy with that. Now we need to go into the advanced settings. 
So on the advanced settings, we need to make sure that the header font size is, is set to 40. And on, and on the tablets, it needs to be sent, set to 30, like that. And then use custom styles for button. Let's set that to yes. And then we need to make a few changes here. So the first thing we need to do here is to change the color to gray, the button text color. The button font needs to be Josephine slab. So I'm going to scroll down here. There it is. And then add button icon. Let's set to yes. And then we need uh, this uh, right pointing arrow. So the header font needs to be Josephine slab two. So I'm just going to find Josephine slab right here. Okay. So that's all we need to do here on the advanced settings. Next, we need to add the CSS. So the first CSS needs to go into the main element. And then this needs to go into the slide description. And then we need to find the slide button and some CSS into that too. And then finally, we need to go into the slide controllers and add this CSS. Okay, so all the CSS is added. Now we need to click on save and exit. Okay, so now we need to add the slide settings. So I'm going to go back into the module settings. And then I'm going to click on add a new slide. Now what we need to do here is to add the heading, the button text, the URL, and then make sure that the background is set to transparent. So the heading needs to be DN, uh, D Nation Photography. The button text needs just to be read more. The button URL for now, I'm going to set it as blank link, but you can link this to whatever part of the website you need. That's not a problem. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the content area and add the content. Now, again, I'm just using default uh, uh, dummy text here, lorem, lorem ipsum, but you can use your proper text for these uh, content areas. We need to make sure the background color is set to transparent. So I'm just going to drag all this way down here to add the transparency. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and click on save. Now let's do a quick preview and see how this is looking so far. So I'm going to click on update. And then we're going to do a quick preview of this page. Okay, so we can see it's taking shape, but uh, we need to make a few adjustments here. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to duplicate these th these sliders because they're going to be needed on a few places on our on our page. So before I make the duplication, what I'm going to do here is to just rename this because we're also going to have we're going to also use the slider module for the images. So for this one, I'm going to call this nav navigation slider. So this just helps us distinguish these sliders on the page. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this three three times like that. And then uh, I'm going to drag this into the right positions. But before I uh, start dragging them, we also need another divider here. So I'm going to clone this divider and then drag it all the way here because this is where we need it. Go into the settings and then change this 40 to 80. Okay, so now I'm going to drag this navigation slider over here because we need one there. And then what I'm going to do next here is we're going to need two rows. So I'm going to click on the row button and just add two columns. And then this is where our, our other navigation slider is going to go. All right. So now we're left with um, uh, these two places. Now we're also going to need another column here for the text and also for the social media buttons. So I'm going to click on insert, insert and then I'm going to add a one row and then here we need to add a slider but for now I'm just going to click on save and exit and then click on insert modules and this time we need a text module so I'm going to go ahead and click on text and then we're going to add the text we need here which is the address so I'm going to make sure that this address is centered so I'm going to click on center and because we have a dark background we need to make sure that this text color is light okay let's just do a quick preview and we can see here it's light. So that's looking good. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And then I'm going to save and exit. Next, we're going to add our social media follow. So I'm going to click on insert modules. And then I'm just going to find the social media follow. And it's right here. And again, we just need to add our social uh, networks. So I'm just going to click the plus sign. I'm just going to choose Facebook. 
For now, I'm just going to add a blank link like that. And then the color, we're going to use 6666, press enter. And then here, we need a circle, okay? Then we're going to add another one. This time, it's going to be Twitter. We're going to add a blank link. <laughs> and then we're just going to change that to gray. Press enter. And then finally, we're going to add Pinterest. And we're going to add the uh, blank URL. And the color is going to be gray. And then we're going to save and exit. In fact, before we do that, let's just do a quick preview. Okay, so that's looking good. We're going to go ahead and close that. And for now, we're going to save and exit. So now let's configure the, um, the photo sliders. So I'm going to go into this one, make my main adjustments to this one, and then duplicate it to add it to these other areas. So I'm going to go into the settings. So the first thing we need to do here is to make sure the arrows are hidden. So I'm going to go to hide arrows, show controls. Are we going to set that to no? Automatic animation, let's leave that on. And this time, instead of using 6,000, we're gonna use 9,000. So this just makes it more dynamic. So these animations are happening at different times while, while you're on the page. Okay, so continue automatic slide on hover. Let's set that to on. And then remove inner shadow. Again, let's do that, let's set that to yes. Now let's go into the advanced design. So in the advanced design settings, the top padding needs to be 150 pixels and the bottom padding needs to be 200. And then now we need to go into the custom CSS. So this is the code we need to add for the main element. Okay, so these are all the settings that we need for, for this image slider. So I'm gonna go ahead and save and exit. And then we're gonna duplicate this twice because we're gonna need this um, on two areas of this layout. So I'm gonna duplicate this twice like that and then drag this into position like that. And then this one needs to go right there. Now let's revisit the text um, module. And in the advanced design settings, we just need to make sure that this is set to 20. And also the, um, the text font needs to be Josephine Slab. So I'm gonna click on that and then just scroll to Josephine Slab. Okay, so we're gonna save and exit. And then next we're gonna go into this social media follow and just add this custom CSS to the main element. So this just makes um, sure that everything is laid out properly. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a quick preview. And now we can see that it's looking pretty cool. Right, I'm gonna save and exit. So now it's time to add our images to these sliders. So I'm gonna start with this top one here. I'm gonna click on the module settings, and then I'm gonna click on add new slide. Okay, so what we need to do now is to add the background image. So I'm just gonna click on upload image. And as I mentioned before, all my images are loaded in my media library. Okay, so I'm gonna add, set as background, I'm gonna click on save and then I'm just gonna do a quick preview. Okay, so it's looking good. I'm gonna add another one and I'm gonna click on upload image. This time it's gonna be the spider, set as background and I'm gonna click on save and then I'm gonna add one more. Okay, and this one is gonna be this. I'm gonna set as background and then I'm gonna click on save then save and exit. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So I'm gonna click here into the uh, slider settings and we're gonna do the same thing, add a new slide. And then I'm gonna click on background image. And then we're gonna add this image, set as background, click on save. And then I'm gonna save and exit. And then finally, we're gonna come here and do the same, upload image gonna select this one, set as background. I'm also gonna add another one. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click on save and exit. So you can add as many images as you like onto these sliders, so it's all up to you and um, also depends on what you're trying to achieve with your layout. 
Okay, so finally we need to add some CSS onto these two sections here. I'm gonna go into these section settings and make a few adjustments. So here we need to make sure that keep custom padding on mobile is set to on and then use gutter width. This needs to be set to on and then here we need to make sure that it's on one like that. Okay, so I'm gonna click on save and exit. Okay, so as you can see, this is our final design. It's looking pretty cool. So if you take time, you can see that uh, it's taking a few seconds to cycle to the next image. So there you have it. This is how you create a navigation mosaic using the DV slider module. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. We will be producing daily video tutorials and tips, so you need to make sure that you subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching and... See you soon.